In the thriving Facebook InDesign group I manage, a British photographer named Alanis asked how to give a page a background color in InDesign. The easiest way to answer her question, and to make the answer available for other new InDesign users who might have the same question, is to create a video tutorial. This is that tutorial. I'm Pariah Burke. To add a background color to an InDesign page, or even part of a page, takes less than 30 seconds. It will take me a little longer here because I'm going to slow things down and explain each simple step. On your own, however, expect it to take between 5 and 30 seconds, and it's very simple to accomplish. It also works in any version of InDesign. Here's a page on which I'd like to add a background color. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer on the Layers panel. You don't have to do that but putting background elements on their own layer makes it much easier to work with the objects on top of the background color. I'll go to the Window menu and choose Layers to open the Layers panel. Layer 1 is the default, where you've already probably added your text, imagery, and other objects. From the bottom of the panel here, click this Post-it note looking button to create a new layer. That creates Layer 2 above Layer 1. Layer 2 will hold our background color. Over on the Tools panel here, right about in the middle, click the square without the X in it. That's the Rectangle tool. If you see any shape there other than a square, that means the Rectangle tool is hidden behind a different shape tool. Click and hold on that shape tool to reveal the trio of shape tools. Now you can select the Rectangle tool. With the Rectangle tool selected, Position your mouse cursor at the top left corner of your page. If you don't see the entire page in the view, go to the View menu and select Fit Spread in Window. That will fit the entire page, or both pages, if you're working on a Facing Pages document like a book, into the view. At the top left corner of the page, click and drag your cursor down and to the right. You want to keep dragging while holding the left mouse button until your cursor is precisely positioned over the bottom right corner. Now let go of the mouse button. If you got it right on the corners, you'll now have a rectangle that is the exact width and height of the page. If yours didn't completely fill the page, just press the delete or backspace key on your keyboard to get rid of this attempt and try again. Your rectangle may have a color to it, or, like mine, it might be empty. That depends on what you were already doing in InDesign. Either way, we're going to change the fill color. Go back to the Window menu and choose Color, Color. Up will pop this panel. Yours may show CMYK fields, or it may show RGB fields, depending on your type of document. Either one will work. These little squares here represent the fill and stroke, or outline colors. The solid square is the fill, the color that will fill the rectangle, while the hollow square is the stroke or outline color. Whichever one is in front is the one you're modifying at the moment. To give the page a solid background color, we first want to make sure that there's no stroke or outline color, so click on the stroke swatch to bring it to the front. Your stroke might already be black or another color. Clear it out by clicking on this tiny little swatch down here with the slash through it. That's the None swatch, meaning no color. Now click on the Fill swatch to bring it to the front. Click within the color ramp at the bottom to choose a color. It's difficult to get precisely the color you want from the ramp, so you can use the sliders here to adjust that color to exactly what you want, adding or removing cyan, magenta, yellow, or black, or in RGB mode, red, green, and blue. I love how the sliders themselves give you a preview of what colors will result if you drag the indicator one way or the other. If I drag it this way, it will give me more red, creating this mix. If I drag it that way, it will reduce the amount of red and give me the color I see in the slider here. If you already know the formula of the color you want, you can type in the values in these fields to the right. If you adjust your colors and see nothing happening, it means you accidentally deselected the background rectangle. So, click on the black arrow at the top of the Tools panel, and then click right on the edge of the page or rectangle to reselect the rectangle. Now you can give it a color. Once you're happy with the background color, you may notice that it blocks out all your text and other page objects. Don't worry. That's a simple fix. We actually expected this to happen. 
Going back to the Layers panel, drag Layer 2 down below Layer 1. Ta-da! You now have a background color on your page! One last thing to do. Click inside this tiny empty space beside Layer 2. That will lock the layer, meaning you can't accidentally move or select your background color. I find locking the background layer to be immensely helpful in allowing me to continue working on the foreground objects without constantly accidentally selecting and moving the background color box. If you do want to modify the background color, just click in the same space to unlock the layer, grab the black arrow, and select the rectangle again. Now try it on your own, and you'll be quickly, easily adding background colors to all of your pages. You can even add gradients and images as backgrounds. If you have an InDesign or ebook publishing related question, the InDesign group on Facebook is the largest, most active place to get help on those subjects on Facebook. With more than 5,000 members ranging from beginner to the world's best known InDesign experts, book authors, and even InDesign scripters and programmers, the Facebook InDesign group is the best place to get friendly, non judgmental help. Anyone can join. Just visit the address you see on screen. If you'd like a more structured way of learning in design, I've authored dozens of InDesign video courses for Pluralsight, written several books on InDesign, written a few hundred tutorials for magazines, and trained thousands of professionals and hobbyists around the world to use InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Acrobat, and other creative and business tools. Visit my website, iampariah.com, to find the best way for you to learn everything you ever need about InDesign and more. I'm Pariah Burke. Thank you for letting me help you learn to add background colors to your pages in InDesign.